Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com. I am. Um, I was just sitting here, like testing my microphone and everything, and then I realized it was four o'clock, and so I had to rush to get started. So I'm sorry, I'm just a couple of seconds late, but not really too bad. Um, thanks, guys, for being here. We are live on UStream, and this is a special CES roundup edition of PhoneDog Live. So we'll be talking about basically everything that happened at CES. And, um, you know, it seems like there weren't quite as many devices um, announced as last CES. Maybe that's just me. But uh, we are going to talk about the big ones. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, check out this, the description below the video because I'll have a timeline where you can skip around to all the different topics. Uh, so you can, if you want to hear about a specific phone or specific tablet, you can just... Um, do that really quickly. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get started. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for being here. We're on Ustream. Uh, we're also on Facebook. I am on Facebook. I, I wasn't actually a second ago, but I am now. And uh, so feel free to, you know, chat and, and leave your comments. And then um, the last 15 minutes will be uh, for an open Q&A. So we, I'll be actually be checking those comments, whereas normally I don't. I don't even pay attention to your comments, to be honest, because you're usually not on topic anyway. So I just kind of let you guys do your own thing, uh, which reminds me also on YouTube. If you want to leave a comment, I do read those comments and I do respond to the ones I can. Not all of them, obviously, but I do answer some questions if I can. Uh, but let's just go ahead and get started. Um, lots of announcements from... AT&T. AT&T started the show, uh, I think, before CES even officially started. Uh, AT&T announced several new devices, and then uh, we slowly got more information, you know, on a couple of more. So we'll start with that because uh, AT&T announced uh, some awesome Android phones, Android tablets, and uh, a couple of Windows phone devices. And so uh, you know, for a long time, AT&T was like, you know, the company that had the iPhone and really nothing else. Um, and now that, at least the theory is that now that the iPhone is on, you know, pretty much every major U.S. carrier, AT&T has really had to step up their game in, you know, when delivering other options. And so, but they've done that, uh, which is which is great. And so, uh, let's start with some of these AT&T devices uh, first of all, you know, they announced another Galaxy S2, which I think is just dumb. You know, they had the Galaxy S2, the original one, uh, that, you know, all of the carriers got, except for Verizon. And then AT&T later on came out with the Galaxy S2 Skyrocket, which was an LTE version. Uh, the, the processor, it was a different processor. Um, and it was, you know, it was awesome. It was like, okay, that's a little weird that, you know, you like a month later, you're going to announce a better model, but okay, whatever. Now, like literally, I don't know what, two months later, we have the Galaxy S2 Skyrocket HD from AT&T, which is just building, again, we have, uh, you know, LTE still, uh, but now the display, you know, obviously from the name, uh, HD. It's an HD display, so it'll have an HD resolution, a super AMOLED HD display, uh, but then pretty much everything else is the same. 8 megapixel camera, 1080p video capture, front-facing camera, 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor, and all that great stuff. So, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think it's kind of dumb for AT&T to do that. Of course, admittedly, that's also on Samsung. You know, Samsung is the one that... Uh, wanted to come out with this new model. Uh, I guess you could say that the Skyrocket was really AT&T's idea because maybe they wanted to have an LTE model. But then the Skyrocket HD, maybe that's more of like Samsung's idea. They wanted to have a model with an HD display. So you kind of wonder like, are all of the carriers going to get this Galaxy S2 HD edition? You know, are we going to see this on Sprint or on T-Mobile with their versions? Are they going to have an HD display eventually. I don't know. Um, we'll have to see. But um, but uh, bigger bigger announcements. Uh, let me see. We also have from AT and T the Galaxy Note, which I know a lot of guys um, are well, and girls too. But I say guys as you know, general, not necessarily gender specific. Just you know, people. Uh, a lot of people have been looking forward to the Galaxy Note. This has been out for a while. Uh, worldwide, but uh, now we actually have a version that will be on a carrier with, you know, with a data connection. It's, it's going to be a 4G device. Uh, 
I almost said it with, with a 3G connection, but it's actually going to be 4G. Uh, it is going to be an LTE device, like I said. And then, but, you know, again, specs are the same as the Galaxy Note that we've seen internationally. It's a 5.3 inch display, 1280 by 800, 1 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor, 8 megapixel camera, 1080p HD video capture, all the amazing stuff. Uh, now, the great thing about this is that, so it's a phone, but, uh, you know, it has that 5.3 inch display. And so it's sort of like, you know, if you want a tablet and a phone, but maybe you don't want to get both, you could get this. Or say, you know, you want a tablet, but you don't want to like, you don't, you don't want a giant, you know, 10 inch tablet or, I mean, even a seven inch tablet if that's too big. So you want something a little bit smaller. Well, now you can have that, but it's also a phone. So it's a great kind of like little niche product. And we've talked about that, you know, or I've talked about this uh, during the show and uh, I've had a lot of people ask me what I think of it because it is kind of this weird sort of uh, product. You know, we've seen the Dell Streak you had, a, had a five inch display and we're seeing, seeing, you know, devices like the Titan with a 4.7 inch display. So, you know, we've seen these devices before, but 5.3 inches uh, is really pushing it. I think that's, you know, it's just, it's kind of pushing the limit between phone and tablet. And so I've been asked, you know, what do I think about it? Do I think it's practical? You know, should, would I recommend it? Um, and I've always said, you know, for me, it's just, it's too small to be a tablet and it's too big to be a phone. I mean, you think of a 5.3 inch display, a, a device with, you know, that's that size, you know, holding it in your hand or you know, up to your ear, it just seems kind of awkward and, you know, not good for one handed use, which most phones are. And, but then at the same time, you're like, okay, well, maybe since it has such a big display, I'll use it sort of like a tablet. But then, you know, when you start doing that, it's it's not quite a tablet either. So for me, I just was like, you know, I don't know what it is. It's not a phone. It's not a tablet. I don't care. I just, I don't want to mess with it. To me, it was just too frustrating trying to figure out what I would use it for. But it was interesting. I um, CNET did this whole session um, where I was actually talking about the ecosystem and recently posted... Um, a sort of uh, just a report on uh, the ecosystem era and, and what it means, you know, for us, you know, being in, in this mobile technology space. But um, anyway, during the session, they talked to um, Samsung, they talk, talked to a representative from Samsung, and uh, he started talking about uh, all these options that we have between phones, and he mentioned the Galaxy Note, because obviously he's from Samsung. And he said, you know, yes, there are a lot of options out there, but it's not confusing. Really, it's the responsibility of the manufacturers and the carriers to articulate the applications of those devices and, and really tell the user, you know, what kind of user you need to be in order to buy this or, you know, maybe alternatively from another approach, okay, you are this kind of user, you should be looking at this device. So when I thought of it that way, I was like, you know what, that's that's right. I'm not the kind of person that wants or needs a device with a 5.3 inch display. So the Galaxy Note isn't for me and that's fine. It's for somebody else. Um, there's people out there who will not like Windows Phone because they love customizing their device or they're uh, a dev, a developer, maybe they like hacking and modding. So Android is for them, Windows Phone is not. You know, even narrowing it down to Android devices, uh, if you need a strong audio experience, you've got the Resound. If audio doesn't matter to you, the Resound, you know, you don't even, you don't even have to think about it if you don't want to. So, you know, when put that way, we talk a lot about these options and how it's too confusing, there's too many options, but really there's not. It's the responsibility of these uh, makers to really tell the consumer what devices they need to be concerned with and just wipe everything off the table. You know, to, it's their responsibility to say, you know what, don't even worry about these other devices. You need this kind of device and we have a couple of options. Um, looking at it from that point of view, it was really interesting. And so I think the Galaxy Note is a perfect example of that, of just for some people it's perfect, for others it's not. If it's not your kind of device, don't even worry about it. Just, you know, move on to something else. And so, um, uh, but yeah, that's the Galaxy Note. It is coming to AT&T in the coming weeks. We have a hands-on video. Uh, Aaron got some hands-on time with uh, with that. And so um, let's move on to another 
couple of other AT&T devices. We have the Samsung Exhilarate, uh, the Pantech Burst. Pantech actually announced a couple of devices, the Pantech Burst and the Pantech um, Element. The Element is a tablet. Um, starting with the Pantech Burst though, this is a phone, smartphone obviously. It has a four inch Super AMOLED display and a 1.2 gigahertz dual core Scorpion processor. Now the interesting thing about this is that it's only $50, and uh, and it's made by Pantech. So you think $50, Pantech, cheap piece of crap. I don't even want to hear about it. Like you know, not you know, not to diss low end phones, but you know, just that's just what you think. You think okay, Pantech is $50, whatever. It's not it's not worth my time. But this is actually a phone that is worth your time. I mean, four inch Super AMOLED display, dual core processor. It has a camera that captures 720p HD video. It ships with Android 2.3.5. You know, by all accounts and purposes, this is a high-end phone. And of course, you know, we're starting to get to this, you know, to this point now where it's kind of making, it's kind of more difficult to differentiate between high-end phones, mid-range phones, and then like super phones. Because you're like, well, you know, used to, if it had a dual core processor, it was automatically a high-end phone. Or if it had you know, way back, a single, a one gigahertz processor, it was automatically a high-end phone. Now we have phones that have one gigahertz processors that have dual core processors, but they have, you know, maybe five megapixel cameras or maybe, you know, not a super AMOLED HD display. So, you know, we're kind of, the, the lines are being blurred a little bit. So the Pantech Burst, where it fits in in there, I don't know, but regardless, it's a great phone, a dual core processor, and the great thing is that you know you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about if it's a high end phone or a super phone. It's such a great price and has such great specs. Um, you know, for the average consumer, this is this is a great thing, and and for Android lovers, I think it's a great thing because, you know, one of the things that's frustrating to someone who loves Android is that you know there's a lot of people who will, you know, trash Android or talk bad about it. And most of the time it's because they've used an Android phone that was a low end piece of crap, or it's because just the existence of those phones, they say, you know, really tarnishes Android. Um, even if they have used super phones, they say, you know, well, the average consumer that only has 50 to a hundred dollars, they're not gonna be able to afford those super phones. They only get the low end phones. And so it was always frustrating that, you know, we always had to put up with that, but now we're starting to see more phones for reasonable price points that are awesome phones. And so finally, the average consumer that only has $50 can get a great Android smartphone and they won't have to be like, you know, oh, wow, this sucks compared to the iPhone. They can be like, wow, I got this for 50 bucks and it's an awesome phone. So the, for the Pantech per Burst, I think it's a great start. Um, and, it, and also it's an LTE device. So this is like... This, you know, for $50, it's pretty amazing. Um, we also have hands-on video with that. And so um, I mentioned the tablet. Pantech also announced, and AT&T also announced, the Pantech um, Element. And this is a tablet. It has an 8-inch display. This, this is kind of an interesting tablet because it has an 8-inch display, but the display has a 4-3 aspect ratio. So it's basically like a square, pretty much. And... Uh, you know, that's, that doesn't really have a whole lot to do with, you know, performance or would I recommend it, but it's just kind of an interesting, um, an interesting design that Pantech would use. Um, uh, I recently reviewed the, uh, the Pantech, um, Pocket, uh, which also had a 4.3, a display with a 4.3 aspect ratio. It had a 4-inch display, um, but it was sort of like a square device, and, uh, you know, for that use, you know, for a phone, I can understand that because, um, you know, phones typically have, you know, four inch display is, is large, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things of like comparing it to a, a laptop or a, 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 um, a tablet, four inch is kind of small. So when you make it square, it kind of makes it look larger than it is. And then that was one thing I noticed when reviewing the Pantech Pocket is that when watching videos, when reading eBooks, it made the display look larger than it was for a tablet. I don't really know that that's really a problem. I mean, we have an eight inch display here. I don't really think we need to make it look larger than it really is. Um, 
you know, again, going back to the Pantech pocket, they said, you know, it's great for multimedia because of this new aspect ratio. Tablets are already great for multimedia. You know, it's like no matter what the aspect ratio is, you've got an 8-inch or a 10-inch display. It's already great for watching movies and reading e-books. So I'm kind of confused on the 4-3 aspect ratio. Not a big deal, but it does mean that the, the tablet is, is like a square pretty much. So it's, I don't know, I mean, some people might not like that. Um, so uh, more on the specs, an 8-inch display, like I said, 1.5 gigahertz dual-core processor, uh, 16 gigs of internal memory, a 5-megapixel camera that can capture 1080p HD video, front-facing camera. It is water-resistant uh, to a certain degree, and it will ship with honeycomb. Let me get a drink really quickly. Sorry, my voice, my throat gets kind of dry. So, yeah, okay, so... Going back to the, the Pantech Burst and they announced the Pantech Element at the same time, both great prices. Uh, the Pantech Element is only $300 on contract, uh, which is great. I I'm so happy that we're starting to see tablets, the prices of tablets come down because, you know, I I've said this before, you know, you guys have heard me say it a million times, $500, $600, $800 is way too much for a tablet you know, make for not not for everyone. I mean, so obviously a lot of people are willing to pay that because a lot of tablets are being sold. But I mean, in order for them to really catch on, I think that's just way too much. I mean, why would I spend six hundred dollars on a tablet when I can spend six hundred dollars on a laptop that's you know just as great, or spend you know maybe three hundred dollars more but get something that's way way more useful. Um, so it's great to see, you know, these new tablets that are at a lower price, $300, for example, for the Pantech Element. But the cool thing about the Pantech Element and the, pa I feel like I'm talking a million miles an hour. Am I? I don't know. I just, I realize like, I feel like I'm, I'm like trying to pitch every device. You're like, yeah, it's great. It's got like a, an eight inch display. I, I feel like I'm just talking like I've had coffee all day, but I haven't. I don't know. Maybe I'll try to slow down. Anyway, so, but the awesome thing is that um, if you buy the Pantech Element and the Pantech Burst together, uh, you can get both for two fifty on contract. So that's an awesome deal, and I think that's great for Pantech, you know, making great Android devices available to the average consumer. Um, thanks, AJ. I'm not even listening, honestly. That's great. Thank you. I, you guys never listen to me, so it's okay. It'll be the people on YouTube that'll be like, she's talking a million miles a minute. And of course, there's nothing I can do about it at that point, because... It's already been recorded. Anyway, so, um, but that's, that's the Pantech Pocket, or not the Pantech Pocket, the Pantech Element and the Pantech Burst, uh, again, both on AT&T, and, and then the Element is also an LTE devices, uh, an LTE device. So, uh, let me see, we're still on AT&T, like I said, they, re they announced a lot of new products, um, Let's move on to the HTC Titan 2. Uh, and, and again, it's like you just released the Titan. I mean, was it really necessary to have a follow-up this quickly? You know, we, the same craziness with, with the Galaxy S2. Where they had the Galaxy S2 and the Galaxy S2 Skyrocket. And then the Galaxy S2 Skyrocket HD. Now we have the Titan. And then, like, just a few months later, the Titan 2. So, I don't know. I Kind of frustrating, but... Um, the Titan 2, not a whole lot of differences. Um, the the two main differences, uh, and I think maybe the only differences, uh, are LTE and the camera. So this is crazy. There's a loud playing flying overhead. I don't know if you heard that. Um, anyway, this is crazy. The Titan 2 has a 16 megapixel camera, and uh, which is just astounding. And, uh, like, if you look at the phone, the, the image sensor is, like, it's huge. I mean, it takes up, like, just most of the top half of the phone. It's crazy how large this thing this thing is. Um, thankfully, the phone itself is also big because, you know, it has a 4.7-inch display. But, uh, yeah, a 16-megapixel camera. And, you know, this is kind of interesting because, you know, we're always talking about camera quality. And, and I think, you know, Apple has really made a, a, a concerted effort to make the cell phone camera usable like not just ju not just a feature to show off like okay it, it captures 720 phd video but it sucks you know you're not going to actually use that for anything but you know like the iphone it's actually good enough to where you could just use your iphone as your camera and not just need another camera the galaxy s2 uh, the droid razor the galaxy nexus 
sort of. I think the Galaxy S2 and the Droid Rays are a better examples of, you know, really following that, where those cameras are good enough to where you can actually use them, you know, as your camera. So there's been a big emphasis on that. And so I feel like HTC is kind of like, well, all right, we can make good cameras. Just throw a 16 megapixel sensor on there. And it's just like, you know, I don't really think that's the secret. I mean, you know, we talk about this all the time. Anyone, anytime anyone compares cameras, the biggest, you know, the thing we hear the most most often is megapixel count does not matter, um, which is true, you know, especially on cell phones. I mean, I can't tell you how many low-end phones I've tested with, you know, five megapixel cameras that capture HD video, but they just suck so bad because the phone is cheap and, and the lens and, you know, the, yeah, the lens itself is also cheap. And so, um, you know, that's absolutely true. And I think, you know, with this, with the HTC Titan, yeah, it has a 16 megapixel camera, but, you know, is the lens quality good? Is it still going to have good picture quality? Obviously, it's going to be great, just the fact that you have such a large sensor, but there's other things that go into that. And so, um, I don't know, I feel like HTC just kind of took the easy way out and threw on, you know, the most megapixels they could instead of really, you know, getting down to the little pieces that really make a great camera. So, you know, obviously we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I haven't seen any sample pictures from the HTC Titan 2, so, um, you know, who knows if it is good. But I think, you know, I get the impression that they did just kind of like take the easy way out. Um, but uh, that's that's the biggest... The biggest change, really, if you have the HTC Titan and you're like, wow, I just got this phone and that was a Titan 2, you know, if unless the camera really matters to you, it's not really too big of a deal. Um, and interesting that the 16 megapixel camera still only captures 720p video, which is part, which is really um, Windows Phone. Uh, Windows Phone is cannot yet capture 1080p HD video, so um, that's not really HTC's fault. But, you know, I mean, 720p is still great quality, so I don't really think that's that big of a deal. Like, oh my gosh, I have a phone that doesn't capture 1080p HD video. It's, I mean, there's other parts to the phone. Uh, that will be coming in the coming months, according to AT&T. We do have a hands-on video uh, with a Titan 2. Uh, another Windows phone device, and this is, um, you know, if you were to ask me what was what was my favorite device coming out of uh, CES, or the one that, that really caught my attention, you know, whether it was the best device overall, you know, maybe not, but, but, but the one that really caught my attention, the Nokia Lumia 900, and, uh, and one, because, you know, I enjoy Windows Phone, I know there's a lot of, uh, tech enthusiasts or mobile enthusiasts who don't, which baffles my mind, because I think, I think if you enjoy mobile technology, then, then just that, just bottom line, you enjoy mobile technology or you don't. I think, you know, just to say, yeah, I like mobile technology, but not Windows Phone. It seems kind of backwards. Um, but anyway, I guess it's not everyone's cup of tea. I personally enjoy Windows Phone. And so that's one reason why the Lumia 900 really caught my eye, but also because, you know, this is a big deal phone. And we've talked about this before. Um, for one thing, Windows Phone is really starting to pick up. Um, it's really starting to catch a lot of people's attention. I think the Mango update brought a lot of features that it really needed to have. Um, advertising has gotten better. Uh, Microsoft and Nokia have really have launched or are planning on launching just huge advertising campaigns. Um, but also, this is this represents a huge partnership between Microsoft and Nokia. And prior to this, uh, the only devices that we had seen were the Lumia 800 and the Lumia 710. The Lumia 710 was like, nah, it's, it's all right. The Lumia 800 was like, wow, that's that's a pretty hot device. But the Lumia 900 is just like, oh my gosh, I want that phone. Um, in fact, I think it was Taylor uh, who actually, he wrote an article recently that he doesn't even really like Windows Phone, but he would want to have the Lumia 900 because... It's just, it's a great phone. Um, for one thing, Windows Phone is is not a terrible operating system. You know, granted, not everyone likes it, but it's a pretty good operating system. Um, but then the phone itself, a 4.3 inch clear black AMOLED display, so the, the colors are, are rich. A 1.4 gigahertz processor. It is a single core processor, but you know, Windows Phone, I can tell you from experience, whoops, I can tell you from experience, Windows Phone doesn't need a dual core processor. Single core processors, performance is perfect. Um, 512 megabytes of RAM, um, 
an 8 megapixel camera with Carl Zeiss lens. Uh, it does have a front facing camera, which is something that the Lumia 800 was missing. It will ship with Mango and then some uh, Nokia apps like Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, which will uh, bring you turn by turn navigation, which is Windows Phone currently has like a sort of turn by turn navigation where it's like, you know, you have directions, obviously it'll tell you directions, and then you have the step by step list, but it will only read it to you if you tap on the steps it'll it'll read it to you and then once you perform that it'll read the next one to you but it won't continue to read them to you You have to tap it again in order to read it's like a halfway like not really even there actually if you want to get right down to it um so with nokia drive and nokia maps you'll get turn by turn navigation uh espn sports hub with hd video uh content um a trial for the cnn app and uh a new partnership with EA will they bring several games uh, and other content from EA onto the phone. And so we didn't get a lot of details on what that was, but some, you know, pretty cool software there. But I think, you know, obviously the biggest thing, the 4.3 inch display, it looks gorgeous. And then just the phone itself, uh, the hardware is, is great. Uh, it just, it, you know, the way that people describe it, it's like, it feels soft and light, but at the same time, just very, sturdy and, and svelte and so it's it's a great looking device and it will be an LTE device so I believe all of AT&T's announcements were for LTE phones so that's great for LTE or for AT&T and then uh, the, the Lumia 900 will be coming in the coming months uh, we've heard a rumor that it could come in March uh, I believe the date was March 18th that's the rumor you know we're not for sure uh, we also have a hands-on video with that. So that was AT&T, and, and I think AT&T probably released, probably announced the most devices. Um, so, you know, we obviously, obviously spent most of the show on AT&T, but we did see a lot of phones, you know, a couple of tablets from them. Um, probably the next uh, biggest announcements were from Motorola. We saw the Droid 4, we, and we saw the Droid Razor Max. Now, uh, there's been a lot of controversy around the Droid 4 because they're like, they, you just announced the Droid 3, it's too early to announce the Droid 4, but you know, it's it's already been a while and then, you know, it won't be, it'll be a couple of more months or, you know, maybe a month before the Droid 4 is announced, so I, I think the timing is okay. Uh, starting with the Droid 4, not a whole lot of differences, you know, we have a 4 inch QHD display, 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor. Uh, 8 megapixel camera with an LED flash. It does capture 1080p video. It has a front facing camera, 1 gig of RAM. Now, but the biggest thing about the Droid 4 is obviously the keyboard. Um, it is also an LTE device, just so you know. But the biggest thing about the Droid 4 is um, the keyboard. And uh, I have a couple of pictures here of the keyboard if you guys haven't um, been able to take a look at our video yet. Um, so you get a chance to see the keyboard here. Um. Hold on. I'm trying, okay. Is it showing the picture? I just tried to load up the picture. Did it actually load the picture or is it just, is it still showing me? For some, I, cause I have Ustream producer open and it like showed the picture and then it just went cut back to me. So it's not showing the picture. Okay, I don't know why, sorry. Um, it did for a split second. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Let me try it again. Droid four. There we go. Okay. Oh, and then it's gone. Wow. Okay. So it just, it just doesn't want to show the picture, I guess. Let me try to show you guys another picture of the Droid 4. See if we can get it to work. And okay. And it just cut off again. I don't know what's going on with that. Hmm, it's kind of weird. Interesting. Wow. This thing is like flipping out. Okay. You saw it. I don't know what happened there. I'll have to figure that out later. Anyway, I wanted to show you guys a picture because, uh, you know, like I said, the, big, the biggest thing about the Droid 4 is a keyboard. Um, there's not a lot of high-end phones or super phones with physical keyboards. There are phones out there with physical keyboards, but if you want like a super phone with a physical keyboard, there's just not, you know, just not a lot of them. Uh, and so the Droid 4 is typically your best option uh, and uh, Motorola says they designed the keyboard after a computer keyboard, which I thought was like, oh, that's great. But I mean, doesn't everybody do that? I mean, to me, that seems like kind of a duh thing because a computer keyboard is what we type on the most. I mean, it's the only thing we type on. So it would just seem like the obvious 
thing to design a, a smartphone's keyboard after a computer keyboard. So I always assumed that's what everyone did, but now if that's not what everyone did, I was like, well, that's kind of dumb, but I guess smart that they're doing it now. So anyway, I don't know, I just, I thought it was weird that he actually felt like he had to mention that because I figured they would already do that. Anyway, bottom line is, it's a great keyboard and it's uh, it's backlit, so the edges, or the keys are edge lit. Uh, and now, I believe that we got word that the Droid 4 was a world phone. However, in the hands-on video, uh, the the PR spokesman said that it was not a world phone. So either I'm mistaken or he's mistaken, but hopefully we can clear that up. Um, and uh, let me see what else. HDMI, HDMI out port, uh, LT, like I said. Uh, Motorola says it's going to be coming out in the coming weeks. Um, I kind of doubt that just because of history. You know, I mean, we've heard phones, yeah, it'll be out in a couple of weeks. And it's like out in a couple of months. So it may be out in a couple of weeks, but who knows. Um, but you guys can check out the, the hands-on video. We do have that. It looks a lot like the Razer, um, which I think is a good thing. You know, nice to have uh, uniformity, continuity. Uh, I always like phones with physical keyboards, and I think... I've said before, you know, it's it's just like a, a mental thing to me. I, I feel more comfortable with a physical keyboard. Uh, even though, like, you know, I use a Windows Phone device on a daily basis, and it has a great virtual keyboard. I mean, I very rarely have to do any auto-corrections because the virtual keyboard for Windows Phone is just one of the best. And, you know, same thing, you know, with any iOS device. You know, those users say the same thing, that, you know, virtual keyboards these days are great. But... I just always feel more secure with a physical keyboard when I can feel my thumb pressing the T or the H, you know, whereas on a virtual keyboard, it may think that I'm pressing the U or the J or something. So I just, I feel more secure with the physical keyboard. So um, I always, you know, the Droid 4, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have the Droid 3. I probably won't buy the Droid 4. But uh, I know there's other people out there that feel the same way I do, so it's nice that there's actually an option. Uh, the Droid Razor Max, there's not a lot of differences between the Droid Razor and the Droid Razor Max, um, but the, the differences are big in the fact that, uh, for one thing, it's a battery, and it's a huge battery, so it's kind of a big difference. Get it? Like a size? I know, I, I did that. Okay, uh, it's a 3,300 3, milliamp hour battery, uh, which is huge. They said uh, it should give you 21 hours of talk time, which basically means that you can go the entire day. Uh, this will be like the one Android device where, you know, you will not even have to worry about it, charge it at night, use it all the way through the day, even with heavy use, and it should last you until you go to bed. Uh, will it last you two days? You know, possibly. I mean, depending on your usage habits, but uh, you definitely will get an entire day out of this which is great, you know, we've needed that for a long time from Android. Uh, it is a little bit thicker than the, than the Droid Razor, just because of that large battery. And so, you know, the Droid Razor had, it was extremely thin, and then it had that camera hump, a lot like the Droid X. Uh, the Droid Razor Max does not have that. It's pretty much just solid you know, all the way down. There is a slight curve where the camera is, but it's, you can't really tell, um, but it's just pretty much the same thickness all the way down. Uh, 8.9 millimeters thick, so I believe the Droid Razor is, um, 7, maybe? Was it 7.1 or 7.3? So it's only about a millimeter thicker, you know, not really that big of a deal. Uh, it is an LSE device, uh, and then I believe that's, um, the biggest difference, just the battery, and then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, and then, you know, it has a little bit thicker, um, thicker body. That will also be coming in the coming weeks, and it will be $299, so $300, which is kind of Verizon standard for LTE devices. We do have a hands-on video with that. Um, okay, so that's Verizon and AT&T. A um, couple of other uh, big announcements that I wanted to talk about. Um, someone in, in Ustream mentioned the Galaxy S Blaze 4G from T-Mobile. Yeah, T-Mobile didn't have um, that big of a, of an impact or, you know, a presence at CES this year. Um, I think it's, I think T-Mobile is really struggling, uh, which is sad because, you know, 
we all we want to have competition. That was one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't want the AT and T T Mobile merger to go through because it would lessen competition. But the problem now is that you know T Mobile is is really in a lot of trouble, uh, which is one reason why they wanted to have the mo- the merger. And so T Mobile is now in trouble. So we might not have T Mobile. So competition will be gone anyway. Um, but uh, so we didn't really see a lot from T Mobile. Uh, we saw the, you know, like I said, the Galaxy S Blaze 4G, um, which, uh, let me see, some of the new additions that will bring um, a Super AMOLED display, 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon ST processor, but it will be uh, available for T-Mobile's 42 megabits per second HSPA, HSPA Plus network. So that'd be good for uh, T-Mobile users, but I wanted to talk about the Sony Xperia Ion and the Sony Xperia S. And uh, I had pictures that I wanted to show you, but apparently we're not gonna be able to show those to you anymore. Hold on, let me get another drink really quick, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, my throat's getting really dry. Um, So yeah, I wanted to show you pictures because the Xperia um, S is the one that really caught my eye. Um, but the Xperia Ion is also, you know, equally as great. Uh, we'll start with the Ion, and we have hands-on videos uh, with both of these, and then I believe we have uh, galleries for both, if not at least the Xperia S, so you can, you know, see some pictures too. Uh, the Xperia Ion has a 4.6 inch display, uh, and it looks like it does. Like the Galaxy Nexus. Um, you know, it has a 4.65 inch display, but it's it's kind of slender, has a more, you know, well, slender uh, design to it. The aspect ratio is a little bit different, so it doesn't look or feel like a, you know, giant 4.65 inch display, but the Xperia Ion, it, it looked like a 4.6 inch display. Even, you know, Aaron holding it, who's a guy, so, you know, their hands are pretty large. Um, even, you know, with him holding it, it looks like a huge phone. Um, but, you know, 4.6 inches, you know, some people, they want a large display. Uh, 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor. This has a 12 megapixel camera, 1080p HD video capture, uh, front facing camera. Sony Ericsson, or, you know, Sony, uh, they have great cameras. You know, obviously, they make cameras. And so the cameras on their cell phones are typically just excellent. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago, I reviewed uh, the Xperia Mini, or the Mini Pro, which had like a, I don't know, something like a five megapixel camera. It was it was sort of like a, like a high-end mid-range device, not a whole lot of excitement around it. And so, you know, you would think the camera is like, oh, whatever, you know, it's five megapixel camera. But the image quality was stunning and the, and the color saturation was just excellent. Uh, they have some of the best cameras that you can get on a smartphone. Uh, and so a 12 megapixel camera, that should be excellent. The display looked really glossy. The phone looked kind of thick. Um, I don't have any measurements, you know, on the phone itself, but it did just kind of look, uh, I don't know, maybe not bulky or anything, but just not like these really paper thin devices that we're seeing. Uh, it does ship with Android 2.3 and Timescape. Now, uh, they've made some changes to Timescape, you know, updated a little bit, and it's sort of starting to grow on me. You know, I've said before, I don't really like Timescape. It's probably like the heaviest custom skin on the planet. Uh, you know, HTC Sense is pretty heavy, but Timescape, I think just every single, you know, physical design element of Android has been customized. Uh, and so, you know, I always just didn't like it. It seemed to kind of slow down a device because it was so heavy, but um, I don't know if it still does, but it it looks more polished and I think it's, it's kind of starting to grow on me. So, um, uh, the Xperia Ion and the Xperia S, uh, that also is, you know, kind of the same. It also has a 12 megapixel camera. Uh, it has a Sony Exmor R sensor. Uh, the display is a little smaller. It's a 4.3 inch display. Uh, but the display is, is kind of more impressive here because it's an HD display, 720p HD display, uh, gap free, and it's a reality display. So, uh, just a beautiful, brilliant, good-looking display, uh, and then, you know, 4.3 inches, I, you know, I don't like the giant, you know, 4.6, 4.7 inch display, so for me, 4.3 inches is a little bit better, uh, 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon processor, a gig of RAM, 
Again, Android 2.3 with Timescape. Uh, I love this phone design, and I think Sony Ericsson or Sony would what they'll soon be. Um, I think they're really the only ones who have unique designs. You know, HTC has great designs, and they're and they're well built. Uh, Motorola has some you know industrial designs, but I think just in terms of uniqueness and, and just really beautiful designs. I think Sony does the best job of that. And the Xperia S just looks amazing. I wish I could show you guys these pictures, but obviously, you know, they're on phone dog and you can watch the hands-on video. It's, it's the white model that Aaron had. I, no, maybe it was the black. No, I think it was a white model. You know, I can just look at my pictures and see. Uh, yeah, it was white. Um, but it just looks great. And then there's this sort of like a a lit band around the bottom of the phone. Now the antenna is actually on the bottom of the phone, but there's also this band that goes around it that lights up. And uh, just you know, little details like that, I think it's it's a good looking phone. Um, it still seems kind of thick, but uh, but definitely a great looking phone. And uh, we don't have any word on if or when that will come to the U.S., but we do know it will be released sometime in this quarter. You know, whether it's in the U.S. or just internationally. It will be available in Q1. Uh, one more device, and then we'll we'll, we'll move on to the open Q and A. Uh, the Toshiba Excite. Uh, this is a tablet um, by Toshiba, obviously. And uh, but the cool thing about it is just the design. It's a honeycomb tablet. You know, 10 inch display. It's an HD display, dual core processor. Blah blah blah. All that. But what really makes it amazing is that it's so thin. It's 7.7 millimeters thick, which like, you know, we, that's a big deal when a phone is that thin, but this is a tablet that is just so incredibly thin. And if you watch the video, it just looks, it, it looks so cool. The back of it, the back plate is like a, like a metal, um, design and it just, it looks awesome. It's like a brushed metal design. Uh, and then the, and then the tablet, you know, it's thin, but it's, it's squarish. It has rounded corners. Um, but it's the edges are, are very you know pronounced edges. They're not rounded edges or anything. Um, but it just it looks great. So you have to see this tablet. Uh, it will be coming also in Q1 of this year. It will be 529. You know, sort of a little pricey. Uh, 529 for the 16 gig model, and then 599 for the 32 gig model. So kind of pricey, but still it looks great. That's a Toshiba Excite X10. Uh, we saw a bunch of tablets, bunch of phones. Um, but you know, like I said in the outset, it just it just seems like CES this year, there just wasn't as many phones or tablets announced, which is probably a good thing because, you know, we've been complaining a lot about, you know, phones being announced too much. You know, it seems like HTC, they have a new phone every week and Motorola has a new phone every week. There's a new tablet all the time. It's just, it seems like it was just way too much. And um, so I guess it shouldn't be surprising that we saw a lot fewer, a lot less devices. And I guess that's a good thing. Um, but, uh, you know, last year was just, oh, there was, last year alone, there were a hundred tablets announced. So it was just incredibly crazy. Um, that's not even, that's not all the coverage we have. There's a lot of other phones and tablets that were announced, but those are just, those are the big ones, the ones that I wanted to talk about. Um, but let's move on to the open Q and A. So uh, if there was something that you wanted to talk about and I didn't talk about it, you can ask me about it uh, or just, you know, anything, whatever, ask me whatever question you want and I'll try to answer it. I'm also on Facebook. So if you've been on Facebook and you're like, is she ignoring us? I was ignoring you, but I'm not anymore. So yes, questions. Um, if you ever see me defending Motorola, it's because I am a Motorola fanboy. Okay. Uh, HTC in 2011, making copies of the same phone with the same specs. I'm really innovating anymore. Yeah, um, you know, yeah, HTC did announce. It, it was just like every week with just minor, minor differences between each device. Uh, but HTC has said we're going to be releasing fewer phones. Uh, Motorola said the same thing. They're going to release fewer handsets. So um, that should be good, you know, won't saturate the market. Samsung is where it's at now, okay? Um, that wasn't meant for Q&A. That's okay. I'm just reading comments. You don't have to worry about it. Would you get the Titan 2? Um, yeah, I think I would. You know, on AT&T, it's, it's an awesome phone. I mean, it's probably, 
outside of you know probably the, with the along with the Lumia 900 you know probably the best Windows Phone device on the market and uh, you know I do want to see sample pictures with that camera but uh, I have a feeling that not, that the camera isn't going to be as impressive as we think because like I said you know whenever you take the easy way out and just throw on a giant sensor it's you that's really not the way to do it. Um, if you really want to get good pictures, it's it's more about the, the parts, the lens. Um, so I don't think it will be as impressive as it as it seems, but still, yeah, one of the best Windows Phone devices on the market. Um, is the reason why you have Friday's Phone Dog Live and Dog Pound on Monday because all of the low-end phones are going away? No offense. Uh, no, I mean, our my idea for this podcast or this show or whatever came um, a year ago. Actually, we actually started doing it about a year ago, I think. Um, it might have even been a year and a half ago. Um, and uh, my original idea was just a live show where we just answer questions. And if and if you've been watching the show ever since the beginning, um, that's the way it started. It was just an hour of me just answering you know, question after question after question. And, and finally, it was just, it was kind of a little too much uh, for an hour of, you know, a million questions from every every different direction and so I, I kind of decided well you know what maybe we can just do some topics and then I can have questions and so it slowly evolved into what it is today um but yeah I've been doing this for a long time uh the dog pound on Monday no we have you know our audience is mostly teenagers um young adults uh, that's usually the, our our readers is just predominantly that group, and so uh, we know you guys like humor. That's why in our videos we just try to be ourselves. Uh, we're not always serious because again, it's a young audience, so you guys want to have fun. And so the dog pound on Monday is just a reflection of trying to cater to you guys and give you content that you're going to enjoy, um, and you do enjoy it. Uh, at least I, I hope so. The dog pound, um, we usually get. Some pretty good comments. I know some people think the dog pound is absolutely pointless because I don't talk about phones. And so, you know, to them, it's like, you know, it's phone dog. You're not, you know, you're not talking about phones. This is a pointless show, which, you know, it's true. I acknowledge, you know, no phone talk, but it's just, you know, a time for us to have fun. Uh, will you get the, the Lumia 900? You know, I, uh, I really want to. I don't know if I will. Um, I'm not into, like, spending $500 on a phone. Um just because, you know, I have other more important things to spend $500 on. So uh, unless it comes to the carrier I'm on, I probably won't. But uh, I don't know, I, I might. That might be the one that I spring for, but who knows. I But I do really want it. Whether or not I get it, I definitely, definitely want it. Um, I haven't watched this stream in a while. Okay, thank you for being honest. Um, what do you think will be the next phone that you will get? I don't know, uh, like, you know, it just depends on what's available, um, different things like that. Um, T-Mobile $50 plan is such a scam, any thoughts? Uh, $50, I'm not sure which specific plan or why you think it's a scam, I'm not sure. Where are all the ice cream sandwich phones? I don't know, whatever. It's, every time I talk about fragmentation, all the Android fanboys just jump on me, so I'm just like, you know what, fine, if you want to be in denial... You just go ahead and be in denial. Uh, Sydney, if I were to get a Windows phone, what would I miss from Android? Uh, you would miss widgets. You know, Windows phone has live tiles, which the concept is the same. You know, you have um, your notifications, you have weather updates, or, you know, whatever the live tile or widget is. Um, but they're not used in the same way. You have a little bit less information. Um, so you have the concept of widgets, but, you know, just, it's not quite the same. Uh, the notification system is a lot different. Um, I think it's just as effective, but just not as convenient. And so, uh, I think you'll probably miss that. You still have push notifications. And so if you get a text message or an email or a voicemail or whatever, You'll have, you know, the bar at the bo uh, the bar at the top will pop up and it'll tell you whatever you can tap it. And it'll open the app where you have that notification. But, uh, and you also have, if you have a live tile for messages or for Twitter or whatever, it'll also have, you know, the number or the information, whatever you need. But it's just not quite as, um, what's the word that I used earlier? Convenient. 
Um, I think it could be, it could be implemented a little better. So notifications, you probably might miss that. Um, and then the customization, you know, with Android, Android is all about customization. And so, you know, people automatically think, well, Android is customizable. So that means that every single operating system should be customizable. That's just not true. But if you do enjoy customization with Windows Phone, you get virtually none. So um, you'll miss that. But, um, you know, those are things, you know, it might be a negative, it might not. You know, me personally, I don't really need to customize my device, so it's not a negative. Um, for me, the, the notification system works fine, so it's not really that much of a negative. So um, they're not necessarily bad things, but those are a couple of things that you'll miss. Uh, one thing I thought strange about Windows Phone was that the status bar isn't always there. How are you supposed to make sure you have the signal or check your battery quickly? Uh, yeah, you know, you have to tap the top of it, uh, or you can swipe down from the top, but really you just have to tap the top of the screen in order for that to show up. Uh, yeah, I mean, is it a problem? I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's a big deal, but, you know, yeah, it's not always there. Uh, do you think it's worth getting the Galaxy Nexus for Sprint, even though there is no LTE for Sprint yet? Um, sure, because it's still a great phone. Yeah, I, I, I would recommend that. Let's see if there's any on Facebook. Um, I wish my girl was as tech savvy as you. I, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, any word on any more G's One phones? Uh, we haven't, no, uh, the Commando got Android 2.3. It got the gingerbread update. Um, but we haven't heard of any new phones coming out, at least not that I can think of off the top of my head. Which Android manufacturer do you think will get Ice Cream Sandwich 4.0 updates fastest in 2012 for their 2011 phones? Uh, the fastest? Uh, well, historically, it's been uh, HTC. Uh, I see no reason for that to change. Um, so I'd probably go with that. Um, awkward yeah I thought the same thing yeah I uh I mean like no if you see his comment I don't even know what this means but I can just tell it's something that I don't want to know and so I just I didn't even read it okay what happened with that Lenovo tablet with a fingerprint reader uh I'm not sure I'd have to I have to search I'm not entirely sure which one you're talking about uh Galaxy S2 already has 4.0 beta uh for developers I'm assuming probably it might be available <clears throat> Which, in, oh, I already read that one, okay. Uh, I have the Samsung Stratus here. It came out in late 2011 for Verizon. Is it considered Galaxy S1 or 2? The Stratosphere is considered the Galaxy S1. Um, although, I I don't know if it's called the Galaxy S Stratosphere or just the Galaxy S. Or the, I actually have that phone because I did the review on it. I probably have to check the box. Um, but I would say it's the Galaxy S, the original. Um, stupid ad showed up while you were answering my question. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, so Nick, um, yeah, I said HTC just because historically HTC has been the best about getting updates out. I really don't know. That's just an educated guess based on what we've seen in the past. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Somebody told me to check Facebook, but I didn't see any new comments there, so I don't know if I just missed something. No, okay. Uh, I think this is the first time, I think it's the first one because of TouchWiz 3, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. No ice cream sandwich for me, but thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, what do you think about skinned ice cream sandwich devices? Uh, you know, it's going to happen. Uh, you know, I hope they still keep the integrity of ice cream sandwich in its design, but, uh, you know, I think it's inevitable. Uh, people automatically thought that just because Ice Cream Sandwich looks prettier that, we'll, that we're no longer going to have custom skins. Um, but that's not really the case. I mean, manufacturers didn't have custom skins just because they didn't like the way Android looked. They had them because they needed to differentiate themselves from other manufacturers. You know, why should I get, you know, this phone when it looks exactly the same as this phone, so they had to make them different. So, yeah, there's still going to be custom skins with Ice Cream Sandwich. Could you explain what's going on with the Transformer Prime? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. It looks nice, but you can't actually buy it anywhere. Is it still just out for pre-order or what? I've read that it's just sold out. 
Uh, the Transformer Prime is available, right? I haven't heard of any of it being taken off the shelves. As far as I know, it's still available. Um, Asus just announced a, a new model of the Transformer Prime um, the that's currently known as the Transformer Prime TF700T. Uh, it will have a Super IPS Plus display, uh, 1920 by 1280, a better front-facing camera, and um, basically the design is different to improve uh, GPS and Wi-Fi. But going back to the Transformer Prime, um, yeah, as far as I know, it's still on sale. Sydney, since T-Mobile's business is on a decline, do you think Metro PCS will ever rise to be a nationwide major carrier? Um, Metro PCS, uh, will they ever rise? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I, I just don't have enough um, business background in order to know what the trends are. Uh, they certainly have a chance to, but, you know, um, they're a prepaid carrier, so they're naturally going to appeal to a certain demographic. Uh, and, you know, their prices are low, which means that they're not making a lot of money, which means they can't spend as much on getting awesome phones or carry or network build outs. So, um, which they're doing an awesome job. I mean, they have an LTE network. It's great. It's super fast. Uh, they're expanding very well. They're getting better and better phones. Um, but uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> Sprint said the newest ones will be arriving in like late summer. Newest ones, what? Uh, what did you go to school for? Uh, I actually went to school to be a, a legal assistant or a paralegal. Uh, I worked at a law firm. Um, actually, when I got my job at Phone Dog, I worked at a law firm. Um, I always wanted to be a writer ever since I was a kid. And I did take classes when I was taking classes to be a, a paralegal. Um, I also took writing classes. Um, and I've always researched technology and, and learned about it my entire life and so even though I didn't go to school for it, I've always had the knowledge and done, you know, plenty of, of learning on it. Um, but yeah, that's what I went to school for. And then, so yeah, I was working at a law firm and um, I was doing freelance writing for a technology blog for examiner.com. I've, I've told this story a million times, but anyway, uh, for examiner.com, I was doing freelance writing and uh, I happened to get in touch with Noah, who is at the time our editor-in-chief and uh Anyway, they were looking for a new editor, and so I just applied, and they hired me. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I always wanted to work in technology, and I had the knowledge and the know-how, and I always wanted to be a writer, but just in practical terms, I didn't think it was a good job to pay the bills. Um, just writing in general is usually not what you do to pay bills, and uh, but it actually worked out. I mean, now it's my full-time job, and I pay the bills with it, so it's worked out pretty well. Um, if you were trapped on an island, which network would you choose based on signal? Well, it would be the one with the best signal, I guess. <laughs> uh, will the Sony Xperia S come to the USA? We're not sure yet. I don't believe. Uh, I don't believe we got any information on that. Uh, any Windows Phone 7 to Sprint soon? Um, oh, is that what you were talking about earlier when I read that random comment about Sprint Windows Phone? Um... Yeah, Sprint says they want to be more aggressive with their Windows Phone devices, so hopefully more news on that. Uh, yay for paying bills. I know, it's it's a good thing. Paying bills is a good thing. Well, not really, but it's good when you can pay your bills. Okay, I love the dog pound. That's pretty much the only reason I'm still subscribed to Phone Dog on YouTube. Go, Sydney. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. Um, I'm glad you're subscribed also. It's a... Uh, you know, it's always nice to see Phone Dog grow. I mean, our YouTube subscriber base has, I think I, I talked about this a couple weeks ago, but it's just doubled over the past year. And every week we still get thousands of new subscribers. And so um, it's just, it's awesome to be part of, you know, because I don't know, I just, I think it's, uh, it's pretty, just pretty awesome to be part of this company that's growing and, and people actually read our content and actually watch it. Um, anyway, so yes, thank you for being subscribed. Uh, yay for phone dog. Okay, thank you. Um, what are the main apps on Windows Phone? Uh, interesting, I'm not entirely sure, um, 
the main apps, I mean, ju- like, just the, I'll tell you the main apps that I use. I don't know what exactly you're looking for. Um, for Twitter, I use Rowy or, or Rowy. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, Seismic is available, and then there's also a fish, an official Windows Phone Twitter app. I just use Rowy just because I, I like it. Um, I have ESPN Score Center. Uh, I have a live tile for weather. Um, what else? I have Slacker Radio, uh, Pulse, which is a news aggregator. I have a live tile for that. Um, you know, a lot of the apps that you can get on Android or Win- or iOS, you can get on Windows Phone. Um, 40,000 apps, there's not as much selection. What I found is that um, generally, if I'm looking for an app, it's there. I can find an app that does what I need it to do, but there's usually only a couple of options. Whereas with Android, you'll have like dozens or, you know, maybe hundreds of options for like a clock, you know, or with iOS, there's like hundreds of options for, you know, whatever, whatever app you're looking for. With Windows Phone, you'll generally find an app you're looking for. There's just not as many options for that kind of app. Um... Sydney, since Sydney, since South Carolina's primary has correctly predicted the Republican nomination since Reagan, and they are mostly against Romney, do you think he will still win the nomination, or will Ron Paul? I honestly have no idea. I, I don't. Uh, are your windows always open? Constant airplane noise every time I tune in. Uh, no, my windows aren't open. I just, I live in an apartment, so, you know, the sound, it's, it's insulation is not as good as a house. So, yeah, it's, you're just going to hear them a lot. I care. Good. I'm glad you care. Um, iPhone 4S or Lumia 900? Uh, really, you know, oh my gosh, it's 502. We went over two minutes. I'm so sorry. I didn't even realize that. Let me, let me answer this question. Um, you know, in terms of specs, uh, you could easily say the iPhone 4S is better, but, um, you know, once you compare performance, they're really about equal because, you know, you have a dual core press processor and a single core processor. But like I said, Windows Phone really doesn't need a dual core processor. It's smooth without one. So really, it just comes down to the operating system and which one you want. Um, iOS obviously has more apps. Uh, you have um, books that you can get through the App Store. Um I guess, you know, I'd say maybe the ecosystem is built out a little bit more. With Windows Phone, you know, you have Zune, so you can get um, music and, and podcasts. You, know, you have apps. You know, so the ecosystem is still there, but I just think it's more built out uh, with iOS, primarily just in terms of books and music, or uh, excuse me, books and apps. There's just a lot more apps. Uh, but really, the simplicity is the same, just just different. Um, they're both very simple and minimalistic, but they're just different. They just look different. Anyway, um, overtime pay, awesome. No, I don't get paid for overtime. I, uh, I'm i a contract worker, so I get paid for the work that I do, um, which I guess is a good thing because it keeps me working, But uh, so I don't get paid for overtime. Um, anyway, so yeah, thank you guys for joining in. I'm sorry I went over time, uh, but it's okay. I enjoy doing this anyway. Um, I will be back next Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern time, uh, and then we'll talk about some more latest news. If I missed a question, I'm really sorry. Uh, I'll be uploading the recording of this on YouTube, so you can leave a, a comment there, and I usually read those. Uh, or you can send me a message on Twitter. My screen name is phonedog underscore Sydney. And I think that's it. I will see you guys next week. Let's see if I can get this phone dog live banner to show up. If not, I'll just I'll just end it. Um, but anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye.